So right now, I got a smile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you just smile. If you just smile. You know why? Because number one, I was sick for the past few days, not feeling too hot, but I've recovered. Uh, the no situation was pretty real. Mucus, blood, not fun stuff. And the throat was feeling pretty meh too, but I've recovered and I'm feeling ready to go to seize the day, number one. Number two is this video is about my main man, my boy, Black Leg, Stealth Black, Vin Smoke, Son. Mmm, my man, Sanji, 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 that's right. Last arc was pretty damn good. It rose Sanji to the next stage of character. And in this arc, we start off pretty hot with the raid suit, bolstering his character even more. And then we have the epic page one beatdown, though we didn't see any results. Help me. All right, which was, eh, nah, I wanted to see what happened. Can't deny it. When this man did a T pose in the sky with, with the clouds, with the heavens, like yeah, I'm like, oh my boy, my boy is ready. With that being said, let's talk about what's going on right now in the manga, obviously, because in the manga right now, the flashback is almost over. Latest chapter, chapter nine hundred and seventy three, where we have the Denjiro stuff, and I'm surprised that we got a flashback stuff even in that chapter, because in 972, at the end of that chapter, after Chadden's death, they say we're like rushing towards the uh, real-time stuff with like the real-time characters, but here we are in a flashback even still in the latest chapter with Denjiro, which was good, I think, for his character, and one of the scabbards does get some more shine. All right, fair enough there. Fair enough, that's fine. But real times what matters the most, obviously. And we are approaching the fire festival. And things are gonna get spicy. It's gonna hit the fan. It's gonna get real. People are gonna, hopefully, major players, maybe not now, but at some point on the arc, will pass away. I am hoping that Oda takes out a very, you know, prominent character near and dear to many folks' hearts, aka Law, but we'll save that for another time. Right now, it's about my boy Sanji. So let's talk about Sanji in the near future, at the end of the arc, and then after the arc. So, first things first. Unlike Luffy or Zoro, Sanji isn't focused on either Kaido or Orochi. Now we do know, however, that he is really pissed off about, about the conditions of the folks in Wano country. Right before Zoro and Sanji save uh, Toko, you have Shinobu talking about how the folks are starving. Of course, when it involves starvation, that always hits Sanji's heart of hearts because back in the day, we all know, Zeph had to eat his own leg in order to survive when they were stranded on an island. And that, of course, is a major thing for Sanji. Not only that, but they also ate Smile Devil Fruits because they were starving and they are permanently affected by the Smile Devil Fruits. Now, people are saying that Chopper somehow, some way, can reverse the Smile effects Maybe it's possible, but we'll set up for the Chopper video, which I don't want to do because it's Chopper and Chopper really does. Ugh. But if you want me to do one on Chopper, on Frankie, on Robin and so on, let me know in the comment section down below. Or you can do, you know, yeah, yeah, that thumbs up does help as well. So let me know with either a thumbs up or a comment in the comment section down below. So again, Sanji right now, he doesn't have a main focus because again, for Luffy right now, his main focus is Kaido. And for Zoro right now, his main focus is Orochi. So plot-wise, Sanji is far more of a free bird compared to Zoro or to Luffy, which does give Sanji a lot of options in what Sanji is gonna be doing for this arc. But obviously, given the whole stuff with the food and the folks starving in Wano Country, Sanji at some point, I guarantee you, will play a role in trying to figure out how to fix that issue without question. Now, the next thing is that Sanji and Shinobu, earlier in the arc, after Yasue's death, they were scouting and they were trying to figure out what they're gonna do when it comes to their allies. And in particular, it was their allies being trapped in the prison. 
So signs with the raid suit can definitely save those guys without question. There is another option when it comes to, let's say, Denjiro slash Kyoshiro, because he's also in the Flower Capital as well. Orochi has left Ronigashima for the Fire Festival, and so Denjiro slash Kyoshiro could play a role in saving the prisoners of the Ratsetsu district, but Sanji could as well. So there are options there. It's just that keep in mind that Shinobu and Sanji were both scouting very ninja-like and surveying as to what was going on and what they could do when it comes to getting their allies. And this somehow may actually lead Sanji to Law. Because Law right now is, he's kind of like, at least Oda's trying to portray as if like Law is somewhat of a traitor. But obviously we know now that the traitor has been around for a very long period of time. Kyle said to, you know, Chad in, you may want to check your men because we're getting intel from somebody that's a part of your camp. So essentially the traitor was even in the flashback and they run that deep. So it's safe to say that Law isn't betraying the Straw Hats, but I can definitely see Sanji and Law running into each other in some capacity. Now the next thing here, is that Sanji may get another fight with a Tobiropo or a number or some of that sort, maybe another, let's say, Mimari Gumi, potentially. Uh, again, Sanji's a free bird here, so he has a lot of options here. Uh, we don't know how to page one. It could be the case where page one is, you know, knocked out, he's done, kind of like Cracker, where like, we don't see him anymore. Or he could come back, because Zoans, they do have the ability to recover very quickly. So he could come back for a round two with Sanji, maybe, or, we have another Toby Ropo, like not Drake maybe, but another Toby Ropo, and they come for revenge because, you know, Page One just got dead. So a Toby Ropo I think is more likely than, let's say, a number, but I also feel like instead of a Mimari Gumi, if it is going to be, let's say, a Wano enemy, it could be potentially an Oni Wabashu. One of the stronger members of the Oni Wabashu, because I would assume that they do have like certain individual ranks within that group. Like, I would assume that Fugokuju is the strongest among the Onuabashu. Or there could be other ninja in Wano country that do serve Orochi. Maybe the Mizukage or the Raikage or the Suchikage. And then Sanji can fight one of them as another Blue No type opponent. And the reason why I say that is because... <sighs> this is a stretch, obviously. But Sanji's name, back in the day, was supposed to be Naruto, right? And Sanji, he does go on like these roguish kind of missions from time to time. And with Stealth Black, he's more ninja than anybody right now, I'd argue. The man can literally be invisible. His nin nin game is relatively strong. And also a lot of times, Sanji kind of is with Nami. So Sanji's name was supposed to be Naruto. Then he's with Shinobu and she's nin nin. Nami was going nin nin and Nami and Sanji tell me together a lot. So basically there's nin nin opportunities when it comes to Sanji. So maybe an Oni Wabashu as well, but we do know that Zoro took out a lot of those guys. Not all of them, but a lot of those guys when they were chasing him down after Yasue's death. And we see him protecting Hiyori. So Sanji could try and take out some of those guys as well, who the hell knows. But again, I think more so the Toby Ropo whether it's page one, round two, or a revenge on another Toby Ropo, that can happen as well. There's options there, obviously. And in the process, Sanji will continue to learn how to use his raid suit to a much better degree. Because in Whole Cake Island, we saw the German kids utilize like the next stage of their raid suits. Yonji had some weird thing where like his hand could actually like, break apart in like several pieces, like several quadrants, and then he can actually attack from rage. Niji, Niji had a light speed sword. That was trippy as all hell. And then when it comes to Ichiji, he had the sparking Valkyrie. So the German kids are able to actually utilize their raid suits to like a much greater degree, obviously, than Sanji can. So Sanji may find some unique ways of incorporating the raid suit ability even more with his own Kenpo martial arts style, or figure out other ways to utilize the raid suit and utilize the stealth ability. Now, the next thing is that, as said before in the previous videos for this topic, this series, in both the Luffy and in the Zoro video, that Luffy somehow, some way, is going to get in trouble again because he will lose to Kaido on the second round. That's what I earnestly believe because there is still a lot of meat left when it comes to Act Three, I would say, or like at least in Act Four, because Act Three or Act Four are supposed to be, as far as I understand, 
the longest of the acts, and then act five is a relatively short act to wrap it all up when it comes to a natural Kabuki play. So act three or act four, I can see Luffy trying to fight against Kaido again, and then he gets deaded again. And then something will happen to where Luffy will be in a very similar situation that Oden was in. Because Oden and Luffy, they do mimic each other character-wise in many respects. So, if Oden had to go through, let's say, some kind of execution, maybe Luffy will too? But again, maybe? But something similar will go down with Luffy that will mimic Oden, for damn sure. And in this case, the Straw Hats are the Scabbards. And the Straw Hats will play some role in saving Luffy. And the Straw Hats will do what the Red Scabbards could not or would not do essentially. So I can see Sanji playing a role in that as well as the other Straw Hats in saving Luffy for like the true final final battle of Wano Country. And then from there, there are three main fight routes that I see for Sanji. Number one is that Sanji's main foe for this arc is Drake. Now this may seem odd because Drake is one of the strongest headliners, a Toby Robo and Ancient Zoan. And we saw how Sanji treated Page One. Now, whether or not Page One is still in commission, we're not too sure now. We may or may not find out later on this arc. However, or maybe even the anime, maybe even the anime may give us better details on the Page One and Sanji situation where we actually see Page One knocked out on the ground, like teeth missing and so on. And then Sanji walks away or he fades into the environment stealth style. Ooh, please, 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 please. I'm begging you, anime. I'm begging you. But that being said, <laughs> Drake, I would still say, is stronger than Page One or any other Toby Ropo. Because Drake is actually more relevant character. So he's more important to the actual story. He's also a member of Sword. So I would easily assume that Drake is actually stronger than a Toby Ropo. And he could be approaching, let's say, Jack's level, maybe. So on the safe side, Drake is the strongest flying six. But also, unlike page one, he's gonna actually understand the abilities of the raid suit of Stealth Black because he was born in North Blue and he knows Vin Smoke. And also, again, he's a Marine. And given those two things, he may have a true disdain for Sanji. So Oda could have Drake being Sanji's main foe in this arc. Now the next main fight route for Sanji would be Sanji against Queen. Whether it's gonna be a one-on-one -on -one or a 2v1, it's gonna be Sanji against Queen in some capacity. Now if it's a 2v1, it could be let's say, let's say that Drake is actually a fan of German Double Six. And again, I doubt that, but it could be Sanji and Drake against Queen. Or it could be Sanji and Chopper against Queen. Because Chopper is going to have a gripe with Queen because of the Plague Bullet stuff. And even though Chopper could cure it relatively quickly, he still hates the idea, obviously, of poisoning people and giving folks diseases as a means of warfare and weaponry. So it could be Chopper and Sanji against Queen. That's also very possible as well. If it is going to be a one-on-one, -on -one, then it's going to be the return of the 1-2-3 model that we saw in the pre-time skip in some cases where it's Sanji against the third strongest, Zoro against the second strongest, and Monkey D. Luffy against the raid boss, the big baddie, the strongest among an organization. However, if that's the case, then we have the same problem with Zoro as we do with Sanji, which is the power creep, because Zoro and Sanji have not shown any discernible means of getting stronger over the entire post time skip. We cannot say that Zoro got definitively stronger from Fishman Island up until Wano, until Enma. You'd assume he did because they do kind of get stronger over their journey, but how much stronger exactly? It's like it's not discernible in the slightest. And the same thing goes for Sanji, where it's not discernible in the slightest. And for Luffy, he's actually improved both his observation arm and hockey over the time skip and unveiled Snake Man and Bound Man, and Luffy has always been stronger than both Zoro and Sanji. Yet Luffy needed help against Cracker with Nami, and against Katakuri, he lost to Katakuri several times before he finally drawed against Katakuri at the end of the fight. So even though Sanji had a pretty damn good showing on 
Fishman Island, where he unveiled the Blue Walk and the Skywalk. And then on top of that, he also did the Hell's Memories, a transformable state where his body's completely on fire. Like Sanji's Zoro equivalent of Ashra, if you would. We still cannot say that Sanji's improved over the course of the time skip. Or at least he hasn't improved as much as Luffy has, because Luffy is growing at least like four or five times the rate as the other Straw Hats. All the other Straw Hats. He's literally growing so much more than the rest of them, it's ridiculous. Now Sanji does have some pretty solid showings in the post time skip. For example, he beat his brother Yonji off screen, and Yonji is comparable to his other brothers Niji and Ichiji, especially when Ichiji himself makes the comment after the heavenly fire attack that Big Mom does, that it is Reiju who is lagging behind the other members of Jerma, the other siblings of Jerma. So the brothers you can say are in the same tier of power, and then when it came to Virgo, Sandy's body wasn't in the best condition to begin with, and yet he's able to fend off Virgo even while the poisonous gas is coming his way. And if Someone like Zoro needed a 3,000 greater worlds to take down someone like Pika, then Sanji would at least have to go Hell's Memories in order to try and beat someone like Virgo, considering how Virgo is also stronger than Pika. Plus, on top of that, Law cut through an entire mountain range just to beat Virgo. And of course, when it comes to Doflamingo, he was rocking everybody, like Luffy, Base Luffy, Gear 2 Luffy, and so on, Law a few times, and Sanji as well. But I don't necessarily knock Sanji for losing to Dofi when Dofi a few times acknowledged his strength twice, and then does a few name attacks on Sanji, and then finally does the thing that even stopped Diamond Joe to pin down Sanji. And the only person to ever break out of Dofi's string so far that we've seen in the post time skip has been Bowman Luffy. So clearly I can argue with a lot of confidence and accuracy that given the context at hand, Sanji's showings for the most part have not been bad in the post time skip. However, is it enough to say that after the Raid 2 power-up, he's then able to defeat a second division commander, someone like Smoothie, or someone like Ace for that matter, one on one? That's where it gets a little bit sketchy. That's where it definitely does get a little bit sketchy. But I do acknowledge that yes, in fact, this could happen. Now, the third main fight route for Sanji would be Sanji against Drake, and then later on, Sanji against Queen. He could have two main fights in this one arc. Now, other possibilities are the Big Mom Pirates playing a role as well when it comes to the fights. Now, initially, I felt like the Big Mom Pirates weren't gonna play a major role in this, but since they're there in some capacity with Daifuku, with Smoothie, with uh, you know Mondor and so on, Peril Sparrow and so on, Sanji could fight against Daifuku, like because we saw those clashes in Whole Kick Island. We could have those clashes brought up again in Wano Country. He could also fight against, let's say, Peril Sparrow because of the Pedro stuff. And Sanji did feel guilty for Pedro's death. So essentially, Sanji does have gripes with some members of the Big Mom Pirates. And because Big Mom and Kaido are in an alliance, let's say that the Big Mom Pirates are no longer waiting and they're actually in Wano country. Like they use Port Mole to get up to the area. Even though we see the numbers and Apu do that, we don't see the Big Mom Pirates do that. I mean, maybe Kaido's being very cautious with Big Mom so far when it comes to her crew. Again, in my head canon, I would rather Big Mom not be in Wano Country and at some point leave later on for Elbath. But nonetheless, this may lead Sanji fight against those guys as well because of what happened during the Whole Cake Island arc. So these are the fight routes that I see going on for Sanji essentially in this arc. But wait! So I'm gonna add this hot spicy take because episode 924 dropped as of this addendum. The video was recorded right after chapter 973, but this addendum, this add-on, is after episode 924. And this episode, with King the Wildfire, page one, Sanji, ooh, it's got me thinking. It's got me thinking a lot. In the past, before the episode, I was of the mindset that, you know what, maybe Sanji and King could fight, but it was more so of a, a joke, you know, like, eh, probably not. But since Zoro can't fly and Sanji can fly, and the fact that King, even though folks want to say that he is some crazy uber swordsman, we haven't seen that yet. And his only attack so far has been in Pterodon form, knocking off the Big Mom pirate ship 
from the waterfall. No swordsmanship there at all. So, okay, he could be a good swordsman because he does have a sword. True blue, real deal swordsman. If it is him and Zoro one on one, let's say that King, he won't be flying around. He'll be fighting him on the ground one on one like a true blue swordsman. I don't see why he want to nerf himself like that, but it is what is there. Now that the episode dropped and we see King the Wildfire do a flaming kick. I'm thinking that somebody has to match the flaming kicks of King. Mm, somebody has to match. <laughs> and of course, I'm talking about my boy, Black Leg Stealth Black Sanji. Now, it's still not a main fight route because there's only one other time in the entire story where Sanji fought the second strongest dude and Zoro fought the third strongest guy, and that was back in Arlong Park. So it is very, very rare, but it could apply here. But now more than ever, because of the episode, and because, and I'm very confident in saying this, because Oda is giving Toy Animation the 411 on a lot of details that he skipped in the manga, I am now more inclined to say Sanji and King could go down. It's not a main fight route yet, obviously. I would still lean towards Zoro versus King rather than Sanji versus King, but the episode did sway me a bit. It did, in fact, yes, sway me a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. However, the same rules would apply here when it comes to defeating King. If it is Sanji versus King, it wouldn't make much sense given the natural flow of the story for Sanji to beat King one on one. But because of Oda's power of keeping Wano country, it could happen. So the same rules that I apply for Zoro, I also apply for Sanji. So it could happen, but again, it shouldn't happen when it comes to defeating King one on one for either Zoro or Sanji. However, there is another option that is not a main fight per se, but it is something that could happen if the Marines are involved, right? If the Marines are involved in Wano country, it is possible that Sanji does another rogue mission and he stalls the Marines to slow their advance into Wano, or he stalls their advance where they're in Wano, something of that sort. I'm not too sure how exactly the Marines would get into Wano, but understand that Sanji does have fantastic mobility. He can kind of transverse the entirety of Wano relatively quickly if he wants to. In Dress Rosa, he ran from the main city to Green Bit to cut off Dofi. So Sanji's speed and mobility are quite high, especially now with the raid suit, where he has those boosters. So he can just fly like a Dragon Ball Z character if he wants to, honestly. If the Marines are coming in hot and they're going to create some chaos, Sanji could stall their advance. And of course, in of itself, and it makes no sense. However, however, again, this is very headcanny, obviously. Sanji in the past, in Thriller Bark against Bartholomew Kuma, he stayed to Kuma before he got knocked by Zoro. That the person to be the biggest issue, the biggest troublemaker for the Marines would be himself, would be Sanji. And then in the Sora Warrior of the Sea comic, it is noted by law that the most troublesome opponent for the Marines in that comic just so happened to be Stealth Black. The most troublesome opponent for the Marines because he could turn invisible. So there are two cases in the story where not only Sanji himself, but also through his family history, lineage, lore, if you would, as Stealth Black, that he would give the Marines a lot of trouble. So we can go more in depth in another video, but Sanji may fulfill this in some capacity by being stealth black and stalling the Marines as they try to advance onto Wano. And not only that, but it'll be the return of Sanji's solo mission, where we saw Mr. Prince, we saw it in um, Water 7 with Robin and the train. Sanji tends to go on these solo missions. And Stealth Black is honestly like the perfect, the perfect thing he needs to go on those solo missions. So if the Marines do hop in, Sanji, because he's more of a free bird, in this case, compared to Zoro plot-wise or Luffy plot-wise, Sanji has a lot of options on the table. A lot of options. But that one is kind of out there. And there is a chance that the Marines and the Straw Hats and like the Allied Forces do team up because you are talking about two, potentially, potentially two Yonko being defeated in this one arc. 
Again, I would hope not because I feel like the Yonko saga ends on Elbath with Big Mom. But that be but that but that being said, right? Again, an another top for another video. If the Marines do come and are going to be allies, that could happen fine. But initially, it's not going to be perceived that way. Duh, for obvious reasons. They're Marines. So later on in the arc, let's say if Sandy does engage with the Marines, then they may be allies later on in the arc to take down another one, the Yonko but not initially. Now the head cannon can go another level. This is very possible. The head cannon can in fact go another level in the sense of if Sanji does do this, right? Kizaru is on one of these ships cause Kizaru is making his way over to Wano anyway. Uh oh, uh oh. Because we have Fujitora and we have Zoro. And in a lot of cases, a lot of folks, including myself would say that if there's gonna be a marine counterpart for Sanji, that would be Kizaru. It's it's, it's clearly out there. It's clearly like whoa, head Kennedy. But but this could be where it kind of starts between Kizaru and Sanji. So again, I'm just gonna you know throw it out there and see what sticks. But I'm telling you know that we could take this head cannon to the next level. That is in fact very very possible. What I just said about the Marines is like the end end of Wano. Okay. Now for the end end of Wano, let's just say that it's gonna be a group thing against Kaido. Like it won't just be Kid and Law and Luffy. Let's say Kid, Law, and Luffy are not enough to defeat Kaido. Let's say you need like Drake and Hawkins, maybe Apu, he also flakes, Kinemon, Kyosho slash Denjiro. Since they were the two first to kind of follow Odin, they'd be the two to kind of maybe join the fight against Kaido. If it's a group thing, I can also see Zoro and Sanji playing a part as well. So Zoro and Sanji would be a part of like the eight or nine V one <laughs> against Kaido. Cause Kaido is just that dude. Kaido is just that kind of beast where you need nine, eight cats against him. And again, among those cats would be Sanji. So what role could Sanji play if it is, let's say, an eight or nine on one. Well, a lot of folks would say, okay, well, Zoro's gonna cut Kaido. Again, that to me is really ridiculous. I can see it happening, but I think it's insanely ridiculous for a whole host of reasons, i.e. it was both swords that cut Kaido in the past. And then number two, this is with Chaden, all right? Kozuki Chaden. Chaden apparently had no qualms at all. He had no problems at all using Enma during the flashback. But when Zoro grabs Enma, oh no, no, my hockey, you give it back. So it's kind of ridiculous right now, I would say, to say that Zoro could cut Kaido, but it, but it could happen. But in the same vein, I can also see Sanji blocking Kaido's attacks, in particular, Kaido's flame breath. Uh -huh. There's a certain dynamic I see going on with Zoro and Sanji, with Luffy, but that's gonna be another topic video in the future. For now, let me just say this. The Raid Suit does have those innate properties of defense against fire. And we see that in Whole Cake Island. It does have very good fire and flame resistance. And then on top of that, Sanji himself, from the very beginning, has always had a relationship with fire. Think of Pearl at the Baratia restaurant, where the entire area is on fire, but Sanji isn't even sweating. He's just kind of chilling. And he tells Pearl, yo, Pearl, I'm a chef. I work with fire all the time. And Sanji's attacks, for the most part, are fire-oriented. So it's very safe to say that Sanji's fire resistance with the raid suit is exponentially high, even higher than that of the German siblings. So I won't say that he can block it wholesale, but I can definitely see Sanji playing a role in actually blocking the gigantic flame wave of Kaido. That I think can happen Though a bit far-fetched, it's in the same vein as Zoro cutting Kaido. And then finally, the last point for end end of Wano, there's gonna be like a recovery period and very certain to Punk Hazard, I can see Sanji cooking up some fierce meals with the vital recipes that he learned from the Kamaka guys. Yeah, yeah. I can see Sanji doing that and he's gonna help the folks out, have them regain their vitality very, very quickly with that Kamabaka cooking, especially if let's say Luffy and Zoro are in critical condition. 
So again, think of Hawkins's words. It could apply for after Wano, it could apply for at the end end of Wano, who knows? But if Luffy or Zoro are in critical condition, Sanji's cooking is gonna help them because it strengthens their bodies innately. Remember that, okay? So Sanji will play a role in that as well, as well as Chopper, when it comes to the recovery of Luffy and slash or Zoro. Again, just think of Hawkins' words here. It's probably for Luffy, but it could apply for Zoro as well. Now, after Wano, Number one, the raid suit will be modified to benefit Sanji. It is unclear if they're gonna modify the raid suit during this arc, because right now Usopp and Frankie have all they've been doing, for the most part as far as we know, have just been building ships, like getting that fleet ready. So it is unclear if Frankie and Usopp have made modifications to the raid suit at all. We have no idea. So for the safe side, I'm gonna say that's gonna happen after the arc because I don't know if they have time in the arc to actually do it. Now the next thing is Sanji's bounty will of course increase. Now this will be mainly because of the prestige of Stealth Black, the raid suit. Again, the person to give the Marines the most trouble among Germa was Stealth Black. And once they find out that Sanji is in fact Stealth Black, his bounty will once again raise as well. And in this case, I can see it being either in the high hundreds of millions or over a billion. Sanji would detest that, but even more so, he would hate if the wanted poster changed to Stealth Black. So it's also very possible, let's say that he's actually involved with Stone the Marines, it's very possible that they, you know, click a new picture of Sanji and it's him wearing the raid suit. So Sanji's wanted poster could also change to the Stealth Black image. So he'll be now recognized as Vin Smoke Stealth Black Sanji. That'll be his new one poster. And then finally, at the end of it all, power-wise, Sanji will be able to beat at least a third division commander at the end of Wano after Wano. So I can't guarantee second division because of the power creep. Again, with the natural flow of the story, whether he can beat a second or first division commander is highly unlikely. However, because of the power creep, these things may apply. So it already does depend on various things, like again, blocking Kyle's attack, or being able to take on Queen one-on-one. -on -one. It all does depend. But we do know that Sanji took out page one for the most part, and page one, I think, is very similar to, let's say, an oven or a Daifuku, where he's a senior officer caliber person among the Beast Pirates. So it's very likely to say that yes, Sanji can beat a third division commander at the end of Wano, but when it comes to second or first, that's where things kind of get sketchy, and only time can tell. But that's it, folks, that's it. This is my video on Sanji and Sanji's endgame for Wano. Let me know your stance on any other topics at hand. Be sure to rate the video. It is not that hard to do. I guarantee you that because I know that you all have a device called Zaymao Shu. You use Zaymao Shu to click, 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 rate the video, to click, 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 subscribe, to click on that bell to join the squad. And of course, as always, feel free, feel free to, hello, please do comment in the comment section down below. A Peace, sir, and have a nice goddamn day. Stay safe.